Hi, it's Biz, the nurse practitioner. I am so excited. Today we're going to go over how to reduce your ozempic side effects and how to get the best results with this medication. So Biz, tell me more. How does ozempic work to lower blood sugar? It is important to know that ozempic is not an insulin. It's actually a class of medications called a GLP-1 agonist. In simple terms, this medication increases the amount of insulin that your body releases with the goal of reducing blood sugar. So as we can see here, ozempic impacts a lot of organs in our stomach. Starting with the pancreas, it helps the pancreas release more insulin when the blood sugar is elevated. It prevents the liver from making and releasing too much sugar. And in the stomach, it slows down the food, leaving the stomach, which leaves you feeling full longer. This combo is the reason that most side effects are GI related. Now let's get into the good stuff, the side effects of Ozempic. And let me start by saying that every single drug on the market has side effects. This does not mean that you will experience them if you take the drug. Now this is an injectable medication, and depending on where you inject and how high your dose is, you will likely experience the side effects one to three days after your injection, if you're going to experience them. And if you stop the medication, it takes roughly five weeks to clear from your system, and you continue, can continue to have side effects during this time. Now on the left, I have listed the top four mild side effects. And guys, I have to giggle, because these mild symptoms don't seem so mild when you're the one experiencing them. Am I right? or am I right? Under the serious category, I have pancreatitis, diabetic retinopathy, which is eye damage, kidney failure, thyroid cancer, and allergic reaction. Now go ahead and subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be coming out with more videos in regards to this content. Mild side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, gas, burping, reflux, and bloating, constipation, and dizziness. Okay, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. These side effects will most likely occur when you start the medication and during dose increases. I have listed here sample dosage instructions, and if you notice, it starts low and goes slow. I see many people out there all willy-nilly with their dosing and not following the recommendations of the manufacturer. The manufacturer of this medication recommends that you start with 0.25 milligrams each week times four weeks, then proceed to 0.5 milligrams each week times four weeks at least. So some people need to be on that dosage for even longer before their body gets used to the medication. Then they're instructed by their healthcare provider if additional control is needed. Keyword, if. Some people need additional control and some do not. Now, how are we gonna minimize the nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea? You're gonna see that I gave you suggestions here for minimizing all of those in four different categories. Diet change, lifestyle change, over-the-counter medications, and prescription medications. So I suggest that you start with diet change. You're gonna to wanna to consume bland foods, crackers, whole wheat toast, and brown rice. Now you've noticed I pick bland foods with fiber because the fiber will help bulk up your stools if you're having diarrhea and it will also assist if you're constipated. You're also gonna to wanna to consume foods with water. Some examples would be like a gelatin or soup. Other suggestions are cold, clear liquids which will help with the nausea. Lifestyle changes. You're gonna to wanna to avoid laying down right after eating. And this is because we just talked about the food now moves through your stomach slower. Also, you're gonna to wanna to try to eat slowly and try many meals, many small meals versus three large meals. My best suggestion is to eat about six meals a day, somewhere between three and four hours apart. And listen to your body. If your body's telling you that you're full, then stop eating. Over-the-counter medications. For nausea and vomiting, you're gonna to wanna to pick something with the active ingredient bismuth. This can often be found in Pepto or Kaopectate. Meclizine is also a good option and is found in Dramamine. For diarrhea, you can also use bismuth or Imodium. 
I also want to stress that probiotics are great. Probiotics are the good bacteria found in your gut. If all of these fail, I would suggest reaching out to your provider and asking for prescription medications. Some of the best prescription medications for nausea and vomiting are Zofran and Phenergan. The second set of side effects, gas. Yes, folks, I'm talking gas out of both ends, mm -hmm. burping, reflux, and bloating. The burps can often be described as sulfur-like. Suggestions for minimizing these side effects. Diet change again. Avoid greasy foods and alcohol. Avoid gas-producing foods, and these can be different for every person, but mostly the cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers, etc. If diet change does not work, consider purchasing an over-the-counter medication. Antacids with active ingredient famenidine or pepsid and calcium carbonate, Tums, will be very useful. If this doesn't work, I would suggest getting some semethicone, which is gas -X. This typically works very quickly and effectively. The third side effect, constipation. Biz, we just talked about diarrhea. Why are we talking about constipation? Well, folks, you can experience both of these side effects with this medication on a weekly basis. So why is constipation happening? Well, it's happening because you have a decreased intake due to your suppressed appetite. So the less that goes in, the less that needs to come out. Also, diarrhea typically occurs before the constipation and the diarrhea leaves you dehydrated. So what are my suggestions for minimizing this side effect? Lifestyle slash diet changes. You're gonna want to ensure what you're consuming is nutrient dense because you're consuming less food. The suggested amount of fiber per day is between 25 and 35 grams. You're gonna wanna obtain that naturally through fruits and vegetables if possible, but if not, supplement with something like Metamucil. You're also gonna wanna stay hydrated. One gallon is the goal, but that's a lot of water if that's not what you're used to. So start slow and make a goal for yourself to start increasing each week till you get up to roughly three quarters to a gallon of water. The fourth side effect is dizziness. Some people may experience dizziness while using Ozempic. However, this is not a common side effect and could be a sign of a more serious problem. For example, it may be low blood sugar or an indication that you're starting to become dehydrated and you should talk with your provider immediately. Now we have gone over the top four side effects and how to minimize them. I'm gonna end with two helpful tips. My first tip is to keep track of side effects and share with your provider. Keeping notes and sharing them with your provider will help them understand how a Zembic affects you and determine if it's safe to continue using the medication. You're gonna to wanna to share what side effects are happening, when they are happening, and what you have tried to use to minimize them. My second tip is just to hang in there because these side effects do get better and typically resolve within the first three months of starting the medication. Well friends, that's all I got for today, but I want you to drop a comment and tell me what you wanna know about Ozembic next. Compare it to Saxenda, do you want to know serious side effects? You tell me. And don't forget, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.